Okay. I'm really sorry guys, I didn't um I didn't record the grooming lesson. No, there's no cute donkeys unless I look like a donkey. <laughs> You've got the um the abscess that we recorded the other day. No, there's a little bit of a glare, so hopefully you can see okay. You guys up, let me know. Okay. No, I haven't gotten on yet. You're fine. I just didn't get it, get the grooming part. You guys up? I'm not going to start. Yes, ma'am. All right. Good grace. Just, all right. First and most important thing about riding is a helmet. If you don't ride with a, with a helmet, you're stupid. Plain and simple. I'm a big advocate on riding with helmets. You bang your head, you mess it up, you have to live with it, and that's not very good, so I always wear my helmet. I'm wearing my ugly one right now, but that's because it's got the vents in it, and I'm not showing, so I don't care. This one was worn by somebody else. So when I have the vents in it, it keeps a little bit more uh, cooler for me. You want to make sure your helmet is like right above your eyebrows. And it doesn't move too much. If it moves too much and it comes up, you're still going to bump your head if you fall off. Now, I trust Madge with all my heart and soul, but you never know what's going to happen. A deer jumps out and scares them. Anything. So you always wear it. I've had people say, oh, but my hair will get smashed. I'm like, would you rather have your hair smashed or would you rather, ha you know, or have your brain splatsed? Uh, it just beyond me. You want to make sure it's all adjusted properly. You want to just be able to get a little bit of room so you're not choking yourself right there. All right. Before we start, we're going to check our girth one more time. I'm going to stick our hand in there. Feels pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and get on. First, I'm going to take my stirrup leathers down. Now to measure your stirrups to make sure you have the right length, you want to put your fingertips right at the top of it and run the stirrup down your arm. It should be the same exact length as your arm, and that's rule of thumb. You want to go around and do the other side as well because sometimes it's a little different. And then you might want to go ahead and take a look in the front. Oh. Oh. My saddle's a little bit lopsided, so I'm going to give it a little bit of a pull. Get it centered. She didn't like that much. Back up. Back up. Come on, they only see big butt. Maybe this way. Oh, good girl. Alright, I'm going to look from the front again, make sure they're level. My saddle's still a little bit off, so I'm going to tick her off again. Give it a little tug, which it'll probably come over on this side once I mount anyway. All right, so now that we got our stirrups even, we have to make sure everything's adjusted right, our girth's done up right. We got all of our straps done right. You want to take your reins, you're going to put them over your horse's ears, and bring them on back. Now, hopefully, she stands still for me. A lot of horses say, uh oh, this is my last chance to get out of work, and they'll, they'll move on you. So you want to collect your reins a little bit tight and you want to make sure they're even because if you pull them off centered you're going to pull on one side of the horse's bit and she's going to want to turn on you. you start by putting your foot in the one stirrup try not to kick them too much and kind of keep it out of the way you do one two three bounce bring your leg over My thighs have gotten fat on me here. I'm just going to say my boots shrunk. That's why they're unzippered here. 
that when you're mounted on your horse, you want to put the stirrups on the ball of your foot. That's the fat part right there. Both sides the same. Oh. And then you put your heels down as far as you can go. A lot of people don't have enough flex in their calf. So what I te tell my students to do, to get on the steps, kind of go up and down and slowly stretch it out without pulling it too hard. And I also tell them to get the proper seat. Stand up on your tippy toes, like this. Sink in just your heels, stretching out your calf. And then sit. So you should have a slight bend in your leg. You should have a straight line from your shoulders to your hips to your heels. And those heels should be down. Now, the reason why we put our heels down is for one, it looks good, but that's not the reason. We do that in case something happens, our foot doesn't slide through the stirrup. And if you look, we have a heel on our boot that also keeps the boot from sliding through in case something should happen. See how it hooks on that? Never ride in flip flops, never ride in sandals, and never ride in tennis shoes. Just like a human, you're going to warm up. I'm 
Sometimes just a little thing like putting your head down will lay your leg on the side of the horse and it will actually make them move in the direction you don't want them to. Now watch. When I use my leg, my horse will actually work off of it. better than others and she's a little bit out of shape. I'm not even using my reins, I'm just using my legs and that's where she moves off of it. And then we're going to move her forward again. I just take my leg off and then my hips flow with her once again. I'm trying to do this on another angle for you and hopefully she'll listen because my left leg is not as strong as my right leg. So hopefully she'll move over for me and stand still as well. So I'm going to push. I'm not going to kick. I'm just going to keep bumping. 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 place and you don't want to kick them. And I'm not saying they don't deserve to be kicked sometimes because sometimes they do that when they're being nasty. All right, I'm going to pick up a trot in just a second. It may get dusty. I have a stone dust ring. I would much prefer to have sand. Even that can get dusty as well. And they also have a different kind of footing. It is recycled tire rubber, which I would love to have, but I can't afford it. So to pick up my trot, I'm going to squeeze my leg one more time. Let's try to pick up your weight.
attention. Collect yourself. There you go. very well she's just ashing. I don't know if you saw a trip back there but she's just because she's not with the body. That means she's not getting all of her body parts in this So you have to try to make them ambidextrous as much as you can. She did do it and you got to know what it looks like. For the most part. Let's go the other direction. Trot rising, that's another thing they'll call it. 
So we're going to squeeze my legs once again. As for the trot. to all my commands, but she still did a pretty good job for being a little bit as she. Good girl. Good girl. Give them lots of love, lots of pets. Tell them they were good girl. Yeah. yeah good girl. stronger or even if you want to work on them and make them stronger. The nice thing to do is take your feet out of stirrups, drape them over your horse's, horse's withers right here. Don't bang them down, be real gentle. Try to keep your legs in the position that they're supposed to be in. That's the key. You don't want them flopping around and going back and forth. so horrible, but I'm a little out of myself and so mad. You can have a baby in your set, haven't we? Yeah, so now we can sit in the barn a little bit. Oh, good girl. The reason why you kind of breathe out when you want them to stop, just, it makes your butt actually deeper in the saddle and they feel that and it kind of shuts them down so that's why we do that. That's another reason why you want to squeeze through your thigh as well because that will shut them down as well. Good girl. Well I guess that's all I'm going to do with her today because I know she's out of shape and if you can look at her nose she's blowing a little bit. She's pretty tired and it's pretty hot still. And the flies are bothering her a little bit. So we're gonna give her a break. When you get down off your horse, you always wanna hold your reins. If you ever fall off your horse, always hold your reins unless you're gonna get plowed through. Um, it's not very fun to be on a trail ride, fall off and lose your reins. I speak from experience. I had to walk home one time and it was not very fun. So, when you get down, if you had your stirrups, you're going to drop both your stirrups. You're going to swing your right leg over the back of the horse, and you're going to slide down gently. 
make sure you bend your knees when you come down so you don't spin your feet because it really does do that. And what I'm going to do since I'm off, I'm going to loosen up the saddle a little bit. straight out just like this let your stirrup slide down take your stirrup leather and tuck it underneath of your stirrup just like that real easy that way when you're walking your horse your stirrups are not going to bang the sides of the horse because that is almost like kicking her um, when you're riding her so she's going to respond to that. You found the only green thing in here, didn't you? Oh, girl. So when you're done, you always make sure you don't lead your horse with the reins over its head. You don't have as much control. Oh. So you want to take the reins back over the ears. Don't tug them hard. And she knows what we're doing. She's trying to help me out here. When you walk your horse, I'm going to grab with your right hand underneath so you have control and then take the extra in your left hand and you want to walk right by their shoulder, shoulder to shoulder with your horse. Walk. Good girl. And that's how you do it. Oh, say goodbye. We'll see you back down in the barn.